Let's turn our right eye to business. Karis Garland joins us for that. A very good evening to you. Great to see Hello. you. Uh, leaders from European nations who look out on the North Sea and have that coastline uh, have met in Belgium, uh, pledging to boost clean energy production by using offshore wind turbines. Karis, tell us more. Exactly. So the goal here for these nine countries is really to meet climate targets and reduce its energy dependence on Russia. So to do this, seven EU members, plus Norway and the United Kingdom, say they will speed up the construction of wind farms and develop so-called energy islands. After plans largely stalled last year, the countries currently only produce 30 gigawatts through offshore wind power. The collective goal, though, is to reach 120 gigawatts by 2030 and at least 300 gigawatts by 2050. The EU says installing enough offshore wind turbines to reach that 2050 capacity will cost 800 billion euros. The Belgian Prime Minister says he wants the North Sea to be the biggest green, green energy power plant in the world. Our goal is to deliver a greener Europe, a Europe which is energy independent, and a Europe that can grow in a sustainable way, that can continue creating jobs and especially that can keep heavy industry, chemistry and all these activities here on the European continent. China has accused the U.S. of coercing its allies and violating international trade rules. That's following a Financial Times report that the U.S. has asked South Korea to urge its chipmakers not to fill any market gaps in China amid concerns Beijing could ban the U.S. memory chip manufacturer Micron. Chinese regulators launched a national security review into Micron earlier this month, though it's not yet clear if there'll be punitive action. The White House hasn't commented on the report, but the Chinese foreign ministry said Washington had forcibly pushed for decoupling. This is a typical practice of technological bullying and trade protectionism. This kind of selfish behavior is unpopular and China firmly opposes it. We call on relevant countries, governments and companies to distinguish right from wrong, jointly safeguard the multilateral trading system and maintain the stability of the global production and supply chain. Well, let's take a look at how the markets fared this Monday. On Wall Street, the major indexes closed mixed, with investors in wait-and-see mode ahead of earnings reports from major tech companies as well as economic data releases. The Dow Jones gained two-tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 closed flat after hardly budging last week, while Nasdaq closed just under a third of a percent down. Let's take a look at some other business news making headlines this Monday. Coca-Cola has reported higher-than-expected sales despite price increases aimed at offsetting the effects of rising inflation. Revenue rose 5% to $11 billion in the period from January to March, while the American soda brand posted $3.1 billion of net profits. French luxury... French luxury giant LVMH has become Europe's first company to reach $500 billion in market value after its share price rose and the euro strengthened against the dollar. The parent company of brands like Louis Vuitton, Givenchy and Hennessy has seen its share price jump more than 32% this year. And Dutch health technology company Philips says it has put aside 575 million euros to deal with U.S. class action lawsuits. The Amsterdam-based firm is facing litigation over recalls of products to help people with sleep apnea. The announcement was made as it posted better-than-expected profits for the first quarter, up almost 50%. Employees at Hamburg and Berlin airports are staging a walkout over salary disputes this Monday. The, indu the industrial action involving security and ground services staff has forced the cancellation of more than 300 flights. Germany has seen a wave of strikes across several sectors recently, including at other airports last week. Unions are hoping to increase pressure on employers around compensation for special working hours. The concrete demands are improvements and bonuses. So, for example, it's about night work. It's about overtime, which is a very important issue. So if you have to work longer hours in air travel, what kind of bonuses are there? Then it's about working on public holidays and Sundays. We've been trying to improve all of these bonuses for several years. 
There we have it. Europe's strike season is still in full swing, Mark. <laughs> Karis, thank you very much indeed. Karis Garman there with all the business.